So we've made it to the final turn, 17 p.m., and uh, the Germans' uh, string of luck for uh, initiative held. Um, so they won initiative every single round of this game, highly unusual. Uh, but their luck is term in terms of the weather has totally run out. And it's not really surprising if you take a look at the weather distribution numbers here. Uh, it was most likely going to be something not good, and they actually did roll like an 8. So it is going to be um, clear. Surprisingly, they rolled clear last turn, which is 1 to 2, and they rolled a 2, and then I had a higher chance of getting clear weather. Um, that did not happen, instead I got rain. And because I got rain, that means a lot of the defenders here in Solzy, uh have to face the negative aspects of having no supply, because when, when it's rain turn, there's no supply that can get into that airfield. Um, so that means that a good portion of this stack is completely out of supply, these guys are in emergency supply, and some people are on out of supply. Uh, needless to say, that stack is not going anywhere. Uh, but they're not really supposed to, right? They're supposed to hold out and hold salty. Um, because it's rain, there's some effects that go on in the game we haven't discussed. I've never had a rain turn, so I'll just review that quickly. Uh, namely, m movement uh, costs increase uh, across the board. Like trails disappear, you can no longer use trails. Minor roads cost one movement. Major roads still cost half a movement, but everything else increases. It takes more time and effort, especially for uh, mechanized and motorized um, uh, units to get across the ground, right? Because it's just, it's much worse. So you have movement costs increase. You also have the supply line reduction. Uh, you can only trace up to five hexes to a supply road. And that means that probably some of these guys are not going to be able to trace supply because I can't really go this way for supply. And you can see that'd be one, two, three, four, five. They wouldn't make it. So technically these guys are going to be on emergency supply, but since it's the last turn of the game, um, I don't really need to worry about that. So technically I should be marking these guys uh, in emergency supply. Um, if the rain turn had occurred, had occurred sooner, that would have happened sooner, but it didn't this turn, so uh, that's the way it goes. Um, the other big change, of course, is that all combat must be uh, assault, and there can be no overruns. Um, and uh, combat coordination for air units is much more difficult, uh, because rain, of course, like cloudiness, it's basically like the cloudy bonus, so you're a negative modifier, you get a plus three to your roll. So the assault, though, is the big deal. There's no mobile attacks, only assault, and there's no overrun. So it really negates a lot of the German mobility. And uh, in this scenario, if you take a look, the rain doesn't even get a chance to come to like the last four turns, as you can see there. In the other games, uh, the scenarios I've played in the Rose to Moscow series, uh, the rain is more interspersed, and they even have winter turns, which is more brutal uh, versions of rain rules. Sorry, I've kind of still got these allergies going on, still kind of got a little snibbles. Uh, my apologies if you find that not pleasing. Um, anyway, so that's what's happening with the rain. Uh, quick review beyond that. Uh, that unit, uh, even though it's got a nice motorcycle infantry on top and Gordiche, they did not pass their disruption checks. The units below are still disrupted. Same thing goes for these units down here. They are also still disrupted. They did not pass their ER check. And uh, the first chit drawn is going to be the SS. Of course, we know that we can't really just have the SS operate on its own, so it's going to pass. Uh, I was kind of hoping I'd get the 8th Panzer, because I really need to rectify that situation. Well, I guess it doesn't matter. It's pretty much all for the marbles now, right? So you're just trying to see where you can go. So we won't even worry about the modifiers, because we're going to pass. Because um, I'm waiting to do combined formations. So hold on to that guy. So we'll see who comes up for the Soviets. All right, so we let's draw 183rd. 183rd is not going to do a whole lot. In fact, they are actually going to do nothing. <laughs> they're going to pass. Well, not pass, but they're just going to take their turn and, and do absolutely nothing because it's they've accomplished their goal already. See, this game, and I'll probably go over this in the breakdown when I talk about how I think about this scenario. Uh, this was a highly atypical scenario in the sense that the last time I played it, uh, well, I don't know if it's atypical, actually. I'll just, I don't know why I said that. I misspoke, but... The last time I played it, of course, uh, I pulled out of Solzy and brought a bunch of my forces back here and then slowly began pushing back up. And uh, these forces never got close to cutting the road. Uh, they definitely were pushed aside or obliterated because I had um, much more forces to actually utilize here instead of this sort of ramshackle force. I, I probably should have pulled more out of here to, to make them more deadly, and I, I just should have played a little bit more of a defensive game here and, and thought that a little better. 
But like I said before, I, I totally mismanaged this battle totally without uh, using combined formations activations. That was my fault. Mm. Okay, so the one, the uh, one eight-third's not going to do anything. They've done yeoman's work already. Very, very good stuff. So we'll see who comes up next now for the Germans. Eighth Panzer. So we are going to be able to do our combined formations. So what we will do is we will take Eighth Panzer and the SS and we'll reveal Eighth Panzer and sort of say, uh, I want them to go right because I'm trying to get their plus two modifier. Um, we will use Manstein. We'll use his DRMs because we want this to work again. Slightly gamey. And I'm doing this because, of course, he's all the way over in Sultzy. I don't really know how he would. Maybe he just sort of signs off and the telegrams or radio. And he's just like, that sounds great to me, guys. And sort of pull strings to get things done and high command supplies, logistics, and whatnot. There's a, there's a lot that's abstracted in this game, of course. And and uh, I would be interested to see what they. What uh, Vance thinks about that, um, but you know, in my mind, I can justify it any way I want, right? In the gamer, so that's that's the power of being a solo gamer. Uh, anyway, so we paid the two. I just flipped him over off camera. That's what took me a while while I was rambling on. So we have the plus two for uh, utilizing the eighth Panzer chip. We have plus two for utilizing our command uh, points. So we need to roll a die and get higher than eight. We do. We draw our. I say we, it's really just me. I roll a six, and so of course that's over eight when you add plus four, so we get to actually activate both formations. Yay! Um, so let me think of what I want to do here, and we come back. Attack on that position. Okay, so already the rain is about to put a huge crimp on some of my plans in the sense that I can't even get this uh, tank unit over to the city because uh, trails no longer are in effect. Uh, it costs two now to enter clear, plus one for woods, so that's three. That's three, six, and then one for zone of control makes it seven, meaning only this motorcycle uh, infantry can actually get over there. So he's gonna go like that. And we'll bring this tank over like that. Technically, this guy is also an emergency supply, but like I said, since I only have one turn left, uh, I'm not even going to mark it. So I'll go ahead and just take this guy off, because you should probably mark it and let it know, but since an emergency supply has no effect in the game other than just being a marker uh, in one step closer to out of supply, uh, we don't really need to mark it out here in the last turn. So I'm only able to get that guy around, and essentially uh, there's nine defense points here um, with a strong point, of course, and they're all disrupted. And I can bring to bear 28 points to 9. So we know they can't because they don't have an HQ. They can't do any kind of close air support. They have no artillery. They have no ability to react or do a no retreat. So they have no options. They've got to basically just take this attack. I, on the other hand, have plenty of artillery assets. Uh, I can't get them too close, but I can use up to two that are uh, non-adjacent. So I will be doing that. I'll be using this 5 and this 4 because if I get this, I'll be able to... Um, uh, get another odd shift. And I will be using an HQ point on this. Actually, do I want to do that? No, it's more important for me not to get uh, modifiers in my combat coordination rolls. Okay, so we're going to roll that. The modifier is... Uh, oh, I forgot. We're trying to fire on a dude in a forest here. Because he's. you can kind of tell there's forest right underneath him there. Right? So when you try to fire artillery into a forest, you definitely suffer a uh, modifier. Get down, boy, bro. My dog is coming to try to give me love. Yeah, it's a plus two if the defender's hex contains woods. So this is an assault. It has to be. I mean, you can do a mobile turn, but you can only do assaults on it. And I guess I had to be a mobile turn for this guy to get over there. Ugh, so. Okay, so yeah, we'll just do that. So it's a plus three modifier. I'm going to have to roll really low here. Uh, no, just not enough. I got to roll a five. Plus three is eight. So... I don't get the odd shift because I only get uh, four points. It's not enough to really change the odds there. So that was some whiffed artillery. Um, but then we've, so now I guess we can just move on to calculating uh, DRMs and whatnot. So that, is he in a village? I pulled all that away. I think he is in a village. No, he's not. I'm silly. Well, that's one of less DRMs. So we got plus one for a strong point. And that's it. Uh, he doesn't get any other ones. 
he has he is disrupted that is going to help us out because yeah their best units are fives so what we're going to do is we're actually going to put that five up as the lead unit yeah and so it's going to become of course a three er unit with the differential uh, and for my attack i will actually be uh, I really shouldn't be using tanks, but I'm going to use a tank because I really need this to work. I need this ER differential bonus. So uh, what do we say his was? A five, so he's a three and a seven. That's minus four. And we get a minus one for combined arms bonus. And uh, do I have an engineer attacking? As he says in a really, really high pitch voice. Uh, I surely do. So he doesn't even get that. He doesn't even get the modifier for um, the strong point because the engineer negates that. So I'm getting the maximum modifiers I can get, which is a minus five in my roll. Um, or wait, or should I just use that motorcycle? Yeah, I won't even use the Panzer unit. I'll bring the motorcycle guy as my lead guy, right? Because I can't afford to be losing VP, but I will do that. Okay, so he's sitting there. He can't do anything. He's got to drop it. Okay. Minus, okay, I do combat coordination. It's the one I'm missing. So that guy's a lead unit. We will spend um, a point on this. Although I wonder if I can use a point. That's an interesting question. I'm gonna say no because I think you should be able. I think you should be using the HQ points for the units that are lead. I shouldn't just be using the SS command points to help a lead unit that's a Panzer guy, right? So this is my lead unit. I shouldn't be able to use his command points to influence a uh, combat coordination role. So we'll go ahead and just do that. Um, there's a plus one in my roll because it's uh, mobile, and oh, another plus one because I'm attacking for more than three hexes. So plus two. Oh, I pass. I roll a four. So minus five is still the modifier. So we're going to roll now a three. So it's three to one, nine, 18, 27. I didn't really make that that clear. All right, so three to one. We're going to have minus five. Let's see what we get here. That's a three, so that becomes a zero. And a zero on a three to one assault is gonna be pretty good for us, I think. A defender to retreat. Yeah, that was super good. So now, see, these are the kind of results I should have been doing earlier and getting combined uh, actions on. So, defender to retreat, uh, that means he's gonna lose a uh, step off this guy. And he's gonna lose a step off the other full strength guy. retreat off their strong points so they will have to go here and then we'll just go here because the marsh will give them some some protection um cool all right and now we can advance after combat uh up to two spaces because uh that's just the way we roll that guy's gonna stay there i think So here's where you're like, what should I be doing? Because now I've seen, I wish I had done this earlier because I could have pushed these guys aside and then really like gone up and, and taken them down. I could start doing mobile attacks if it wasn't a rain turn. Uh, and so very vital to use these advances properly. They haven't gone yet. That's the one thing that gives me some pause. Oh, well, I think what we're gonna do is we're gonna go yeah, because they can't. Okay, I'm kind of being stupid and forgetting some rules here. So we're just going to go boom, boom. He's going to come over there. And this guy will just come down here. And... Is that going to give me what I want? I'll do that, and then this guy will come down here, and that seems kind of risky, and I might even lose him if they get their ability to attack, but he can maybe combat react and, and spirit himself away. Um, yeah, because that way I can keep him, because he has his own control, so these guys will have to automatically stop if they get in his own control and keep them away from my artillery up here. Although, yeah, and they still couldn't even get over here. Oh, I probably should have moved that guy. In fact, I probably will just say I did move that guy. That would be what? One, two, three, four. Yeah, so he'll just he'll move up here. Sorry, should have done that earlier. Okay. I think that's going to keep me safe. 
Yeah, because it'll be one, two, three. Yeah, no, no, keep me totally safe. You won't be because of the rain and the stream costs. Stream costs go up, and in rain, it could cost plus two to cross a stream. So much more difficult to get around. <coughs> and of course, as we have our joint activation, I'm going to rectify a mistake I made here. If you recall, last turn I did some shuffling of forces to make this more defensive, but I forgot to bring in an HQ unit, and without an HQ unit. I can't conduct uh, no retreats and whatnot, so we'll move that guy over there. Yeah, you have to have an HQ unit in order to um, uh, conduct a no retreat. I mean, is that really true, though? I know I said I uh, to do no retreat. Oh yeah, yeah, it has to either have a strong point or an HQ unit, that's what, I always get that kind of confused. So, he can do that now, and he can hold out, and uh, they're not really going to make an attack because they're so weak over there. So, that's the end of that turn, let's see what uh, Soviet unit comes up next. The 21st tanks. Alright, so they are in a good position here to just execute their strategy. Um, luckily, I mean, unluckily, maybe we should say that the Panzer was able to get their headquarters there because um, they might have had an option to get them to retreat, but not anymore. So, being out of supply, and being in emergency supply, it doesn't really affect, um, since we're not gonna be doing attacks, I guess I should just total this up. It doesn't really affect your defensive stats, it affects your offensive stats. So we have 714, um, 16, 17 defense there. So any attack on that is going to have to require attacking a 17. Uh, let me, I can't really reshift my forces. I'm pretty much geared up for this, and especially with the rains being so bad, I'm going to have to just um, kind of make this happen. Let me see if I should be shifting some of these guys out. Yeah, probably. Yeah, that's what I'm gonna do because this guy, we're gonna do a little swap -a here. That guy's gonna come out, he's gonna come in. I'm just gonna keep that guy there. All right, so we're gonna attack this stack of 17. Now I need to refigure re out some of these values. I should have probably done this off camera, but I didn't. So we're just gonna do it real quickly now. Four, nine, plus six is 15. So yeah, I guess that, stayed up, that ended up being 15. Um, this unit is still 17 because it has done absolutely nothing. Um, I believe this is still a 10. Yeah, it hasn't taken any losses. And this has taken, I believe, did it take a loss last year? Maybe not. 6, 9, 14. No, it's still 14. So 14, 10. Okay, we got quite a bit here. All right, so we're going to do an assault turn, which lets us coordinate everybody around it. Well, we'll have to see if we coordinate. Uh, so we got 24, what is this, uh, 34, 39, uh, 49, 56, so 56 to 17, let's see, what does that give us right now, 17, 34, uh, let's see, 51, so that gives us 3 to 1 odds so far, and I don't think we'll be able to, we cannot increase that, because it's just too much, 17, 34, let's see, wait, I'm sorry, 17, 34, 40. Yeah, I'd have, to, I'd have to do like 11 more points, and then I don't, I won't be able to do that with artillery strikes. So that's just how it's going to be, 3 to 1 attack odds. Um, we declare an attack on this guy. He has the option of uh, retreating. He's not going to. Um, I mean, I guess he kind of could, but it's, it's really advantageous to hold out this position as long as we can. Because um, even in an assault, if we have to retreat... Uh, we could be totally eliminated, but we're not going to because we're going to do no retreat. That's one thing. If we had, if we could retreat, we might be eliminated because an assault lets you only move one. I guess you can move up to two, so I could get away. That's I lied there. Uh, the retreater can always choose to go up to two hexes uh, unless it's a mobile combat and they're forced to do two hexes. Okay, so he will declare no retreat. And then we'll give him a little bit of an extra added bonus there. Um, he automatically passes because of the HQ. Uh... So I don't think there's anything else we can bring planes in. I forgot all about the planes. There's not a whole lot left for the old Germans. 
their air force is hurting very badly. Uh, in fact, they have two planes left, and uh, the German and the Soviets have two as well. Soviets will. Oh, the problem is though is that the rain makes it a plus three, um, plus three turn. So that kind of makes it difficult to get planes in the air. But we're going to try anyway. We're going to hope for low rolls, and we're going to bring in. Um, at six and at four, and the Germans are not going to be able to do anything. They're going to have to just hold off because they have other priorities, and they might need that air power later. Okay, so we'll go ahead and try to roll and see if we get these planes. It is a plus three modifier, so let's see if I can do that. That's a no. Uh, that's a plus three. No, nope, it doesn't. Both fail. Both do not make it. Uh, that was a pretty long shot anyway. Especially in rain, it's just very difficult. So we don't have that, we're not bringing in artillery, so I guess we can just move on straight to the modifiers. Uh, let's see, do I have an engineering unit attacking? Oh, there's no strong point, so I don't even matter. Okay, so we have plus one, no retreat. We have um, no defenses there, it's clear terrain and it's not a city or a village. And uh, my neighbor is now practicing his guitar. Uh, he practices quite a bit. He's actually good, so that actually doesn't make it so bad. Um, that's actually a nice thing. If we do ER differential, this is where we're going to probably get into a little bit of trouble because I think they just have... Yeah, they have that guy, so we're going to put him up. And uh, unfortunately, we're running with 21st tank units. They don't really have the best uh, ER ratings. So we'll get that guy. So we're going to suffer a plus one ER rating because that guy's a six and this guy's a five. So we're looking at three to one odds, plus two so far. Um, I'm going to do a combat coordination. That is also going to make this a very difficult roll. Um, it's just mainly plus one for attacking for more than three hexes. So, But with that guy being the lead and a five, let's see what we get here. Plus one of our roll. Oh, make it. Luck is, luck is shining on us so far. So here we go. Three to one attack with a plus two overall our roll. Let's see what we get. Oh, that's not good. Rolled an eight, so that's a 10. Oh, that could be bad for us. On a three to one, a 10 is attacker retreats. So, everybody take one. Oh, yeah. Dang, that's really gonna hurt. Yep, all those people have a retreat. This is really going to hurt because I don't know if I'm going to be able to get those guys back across. Um, it's just going to be a lot of movement because it costs what? It's a clear hex, so that's automatically two. It's two across the stream and it's one. So that's five. I think I, well, I'm going to have to do use mobile. Just get them across. That's going to give me die roll modifiers, but that's the way it goes. So disastrous attack there. Well, not disastrous, but just um, um, definitely not what you want to get, which is a retreat result. At least I didn't suffer any losses. So it's looking like they're going to be able to hold Salty maybe this turn. We'll see. We'll have to see. Okay. So we did that. That's the 21st tanks move. So now we look and say, who's up now for the Germans? All right. And it's going to be third motorized. So uh, I think... I think what we'll do is we'll take a break because so my, my upstairs neighbor is playing his guitar and I would like to not have uh, guitar noises, although it's, it can be fitting to accompany music for battles. Uh, I think I'll let him practice in peace and not record that for posterity. So when I come back, we'll do this third motorized attack here on Gordichie. It is the last such attempt and it probably won't work. So because right here you can do a no retreat. So um, we come back, we'll try to do and see what happens there, even though it's sort of a pointless attack in a way. Um, we come back, third motorized. So I briefly misspoke. I sort of said I didn't think the third motorized could take that city, but I didn't realize that that was, um, that was only their first activation. I thought that was their second activation. If that had been their second activation, then um, it would have been much more, uh, then that wouldn't have been possible because, of course, this attack can use a no retreat. And if they do a no retreat, then... Um, I won't be able to get them to dislodge, right? And I can't get the points for taking the city. 
But if I have a successful attack this turn and can reduce the amount of steps to below three and then manage to go again before any of these other units can activate, which is a big, big if, uh, pretty much unlikely. If I can pull that off and get another successful attack, it's possible I can push them out of the city and get uh, the victory points for holding that spot. So we're just gonna have to keep attacking. Um, same values here, 18, nine, and 12 from these stacks. And uh, we got seven defense here. So, you know, the truth is, is uh, we're just going to keep pressing it. And so we're just going to go ahead and attack them. Now, they will have artillery support, unfortunately, um, but we'll see how what we can get. Uh, we'll see what we can do here. Um, just see what we can actually muster. So, kind of write this over here. We got seven defense. Uh, we have, what do we have? Uh, 12 and 18 is 30, so 39 attacking power. Um, so, defender will use uh, artillery. He will try to bring that in. He can only use one of them because his two artillery together equal more than his total defense. So he'll just bring in the six to begin with. So he'll bring in the six. He's got to roll um, no modifiers because it's an assault. So it's not a mobile turn. It's an assault turn through the move. So he gets no modifiers. He has to roll five or less. He rolls a 10. So that's a natural 10, and it's a total whiff. This is very big for us. Very, very big. Break it down. Break it down, dog. That's huge. Okay, so let's see what the odds are now. We have 7, 14, 21, 28, 35. Um, let's see. So yeah, I could actually get... Because um, all I have to do is get to 43, and I get 6 to 1 odds. Right now it's 5 to 1. So I just need... Four more, so yeah, I think we will bring, we'll call in our artillery. And what we'll do is we'll call in these two to get seven. Unfortunately, I can't do enough to get eight, so that if I miss it, I still get half the roll, but we'll just do this because we have this Ar uh, Arco HQ we haven't been using very much, so we'll go ahead and flip these two guys over. We'll use the Arco HQ points to see if we can get this to work. And we're looking for uh, there's no modifiers, but we have to get six or below with a minus one on the roll. So let's see what we get here. All right, we did that perfectly fine. That's a two. It's a little cockeyed here, isn't it? There we go. So I got my actual seven, so that becomes now, what, 46? So that becomes six to one odds. All right, that's super good. So now we need to add up the modifiers. Um, he has, do I have an engineer? He has a strong point. I keep forgetting if I have engineers attacking or not, and that's something I really should be, um, more on top of. No, my guy's just motorcycle. I know he just, oh, look, there's an in. Oh, goodness, have I been fucking that up? Because that's, that's why. Interesting. I might have been. I might have effed that up last turn because I forgot he had an artillery there. So, oops. I, that could have been a total mistake. Oops. That is a mistake because otherwise his strength would have been eight. That definitely could have messed some odds up. Oops. Gotta really inspect those stacks more carefully. Anyway, no engineering units. So let's go ahead and total up the DRMs here, and I'll just pull the camera down a little bit. What do we got? We got plus one for village. Plus one for strong point. He is going to do a no retreat. It's just plus one for no retreat. Where's no retreat token? Plus one, no retreat. Um, I'll be attacking with my motorcycle infantry. He actually has a non disrupted unit, so this is going to help him out. It's a guy on top. So he's a six, right? And this guy's seven, so I get a minus one ER. Um, yeah, without HQ points, they're not really going to bring in the toast stuff, so. Okay, so they did that. Oh, I could have used, I'm so stupid, I should have used this HQ to help that artillery, or wherever he is, hanging out. Should have used that to help that artillery out, that would have kept that from being a total whiff. But, you know, you make mistakes, you gotta live with it. So, we do that. Uh, we have to, we don't have to do a combat coordination roll, because it's just an assault, and they're all from the same formation. So what do we have here? It looks like a plus two overall to the roll. All right, so we have a 6-1 to one assault, plus 2 to the roll. Oh, geez, really? A 9. So that becomes a 10. Oh, that's really unfortunate. 
attacker one, defender one with armor attrition results. Um, that sucks, kind of, for me. So goodbye, motorcycle. But he also loses a motorcycle, so he should have just lost so much more here. That was actually a really pathetically bad, bad roll. Alright, so he loses his guy, and they don't get the no retreat. Um, there was armor attrition, but they don't have any armor uh, units that are that can qualify for armor attrition, so we don't have to lose our armored unit or anything like that. So, safe there. Um, damn, damn, that would have been really nice to have gotten a much better result, because honestly, 6 to 1 assault odds is, is very good. We could have done a lot more damage here. Could have easily gotten a defender 3 retreat or defender eliminated even. Ah, that's just, that's the way that goes. Okay, so third motorized, not quite able to get it done. Once again, Defenders and Gordishe just barely hanging on. So let's see if they actually do hang on with the next Soviet chit. High percentage that they'll actually be able to get something that'll help them out here. Oh, they didn't. It's the 180th, so this hope remains. Hope remains alive. Um... Unfortunately, the 180th, though, that is going to give them an opportunity to do some nasty things to me. Uh, namely, they can attack uh, that guy. And I think they will attack that guy. Um, because they can't really move to get to any of the artillery, of course, because I secured it away, far enough away. But they can take that guy out, and they might as well. Um, totally worth it, and, because they can. So actually what they're going to do is they're going to declare an attack. Uh, he does get to react. He does get a combat reaction. So we're going to roll and see that, uh, see if he scurries away. So he's got to roll less than a seven. And he rolls a six. So yeah, that combat uh, becomes negated. He moves back two spaces, right? So I'm going to go one. And we'll go back two. And then this guy advances. And then the combat sort of just ends. Okay, so that's the one Aedis move. Um, very possible that if I get the activate any formation marker, I'll s activate them again to come attack some artillery, which would be terrible because that would be victory points I can't afford to lose as the German player. So, okay, did that. Let's see who comes up next. So there are just three tokens left. If we draw the third motorized, might actually have a shot at taking Gordishe, and that could be the game. That could be the game. So let's find out. Drawing it now. Nope, it's our friend's the 8th Panzer. Ah, uh, the thing is we have to do combat coordinated, we have to do coordinated things here to make this work. So we are going to pass, and we'll just pass with the 8th Panzer. Damn, that was... Ah, uh, so another another opportunity here. And ugh, pretty sure the th there's only one marker in here, we, the 70th. Oh, nope, I draw the 202. So that pretty much, I think, guarantees that I won't be able to take Gordishie because the 202, if we go back up here, can easily sneak a unit in, and they, they will do that. Um, although it's going to be much tougher now with the roads and trails not really working. So that's one, two, three, four, five. Can he even get in here? Oh, he can because that's a road. Damn. So yeah, it's one, two, three for the zone of control. And then to leave it costs one. Oh, yes, yeah, so maybe this won't work. One, two, three. It costs one, so that's one, two, three, so that's six. No, he actually can't get in. But this guy can get in. Yeah, and so this guy will, the 202. He'll slide into there. All right, so he's gonna slide into there and that's actually gonna give them the extra step they need, the more defense to hold out. They're gonna be able to do a no retreat. So that pretty much makes Gordiche uh, untakeable. Kind of a bummer, that might be the game right there, that might be the chit that actually seals the deal. So, they're going to hold off there, and uh, next up comes a Soviet chit, or not Soviet chit, a German chit. And they're going to draw 
the SS, we didn't even get that. We will try to combine their formations again, doing the same thing we did, only we don't get the um, commander bonus, so we're gonna have to roll a six or higher. And we do. So that means they can combine. And once again, we'll get to wreak havoc uh, down south here. So let me take a look down south, and when I come back, we'll figure out what the final combined formation is going to be uh, for these, these uh, gentlemen down here. Okay, so I figured out what I'm going to do with my combined formation movement, and essentially what I'm going to do is bring this guy down here, and then these three are going to attack that disrupted stack. Uh, in order to keep this stack from coming up here and... Um, Although he's so powerful, it's kind of ridiculous. How powerful is he? Five, six, seven. There's 11 attack. Yeah, okay. Uh, we can figure that out. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to shift him out of here and attack, but then to guard these guys, we're going to bring this tank over here, but we're going to shift some guys over here. So this guy's going to come here. Uh, uh, this dude's going to come over here. This guy's going to come over here. And that leaves me with what? Two, four, six. Yeah. So this guy's going to go one, two, three, four, five. And so he can make it. Because the main roads don't get reduced in rain. And then this guy will come down here and that'll give us plenty of defensive value in case we get attacked. Okay. Now. We're going to bring the attack down here on this guy, and uh, same kind of things always have applied. This guy only has six defense, and I can attack here with seven, uh, 19, and two, so it's actually 19 and nine, so what is that, 28? So we go ahead and do six, 28, that gives me what, six, 12, four, four to one so far. Oops, don't, don't hit other guys. That gives me what, four to one. 6, 12, 18, 24, and I really need to get two more to get an odd shift, so I will be calling in some artillery, and I will call in that guy and that guy. He is in a woods hex. He's in a marsh. Oh, what does a marsh do? I think that halves it. Does that actually have it? I kind of forget. Let me take a look at what marsh does. I forgot I put him there for a reason. Gee. Yeah, it's halved when firing a marsh. Ugh. So I don't even think I can get the bonus if even if I do this right, because I'm gonna need to fire like that would only give me six, and that automatically makes it a three. I would have to get I'd have to get the roll. So I guess I will do that. And we'll have to just count on the fact that I'm gonna get the roll. So what do we got here? A six. Uh, we'll use that guy. So it is plus two, because I'm also firing into a woods hex. I believe this guy is in the woods. He is. It's a woody, marshy, gross area. Not very fun. So we will have a plus two to our roll. So we're looking to get four or less. And we don't do it. Uh, we only get half of a half, so that's actually just one. So we don't even get the odd shift. So tried to do it, but didn't quite, didn't quite get it. Okay, so there's no possibility for air. I mean, we could if, if we were the Germans, but we're going to save that, I think, for the Gordici attack. Um, the Soviets cannot use air. They don't have HQ. They can't run away. They can't declare no retreat. Can't do any of that stuff. So we go straight to combat. Um, in terms of terrain modifiers, I don't believe Marsh uh, gives you any... Nope, on combat. Nope, no effect. Neither do Woods. So he gets actually no defensive um, modifiers. We'll be attacking with that motorcycle infantry, even though motorcycle infantry tend to bite it. I think everybody's a four, yeah. So this is actually going to be, because they're disrupted, they have two ER. So automatically off the bat we get five uh, ER bonus. We get a minus one for a combined arms bonus. Uh, but we can only get a minus five total modifier. Uh, so we'll see what our combat coordination is going to be. Uh, we'll use that guy. Uh, we get a plus one to our roll because uh, more than three hexes are attacking. So we roll this. Okay, so yeah, I end up failing that combat coordination roll. So I will get plus two here. So that actually becomes a minus four. And honestly, I should have spent points there. I don't know why I didn't spend points. Um, that's kind of dumb. So what I, I'm just going to retroactively say I spent a point on that. <laughs> 
because like that's really dumb not to use my HQ points on my last attack. Um, in that case, I would have passed that, so it'll just become a minus five. All right, so we got a four to one assault with a minus five to the roll, so looking pretty good. I roll seven, so it becomes a two. A two on a four to one is defender to retreat. Is that right? Yep, it's defender to retreat. Um, yeah, see, this is why I should have been doing that combined formations right off the bat. It was kind of dumb not to. So yeah, two of those guys go away. Then he retreats off, and he, you know, see, that would have been that would have been the decimation of that force. That could have easily been you know, focusing on the other guys. I don't even need to do advance after combat because I can't uh, um, do anything else with those guys. So that turns kind of over. That's sort of a vanity attack. Uh, didn't give me any VP, but sort of the carrying out the historical, like, yeah, that's what they would have done. And then they could have started beginning focusing on those guys, just totally taking them out. Um, yeah, you know, kind of thinking I didn't get the score of DCA uh, chance, so I'm kind of thinking it's it's not going to happen for the Germans. Uh, but, you know, we'll see. We'll see. Okay. Let's see who's going to come up next on the Soviets. And, uh... It's the 70th. So, because I had to retreat last turn, we're going to have to take a look and figure out what's the best way to approach this uh, Solzy airfield and see if there's any way we can even try to crack it. Uh, we didn't even cause any damage last turn, so going to have to sit there and think about how I want to move them up and uh, conduct the final phase of this battle. So... Having retreated the last round really puts a damper on my ability to do any significant damage here because it's going to take another turn to get everybody coordinated around there again to launch attacks on that one point. And um, because it's a rain turn, I have very little ability to maneuver around and, like, say, wheel around and try to go for a weaker point or over to the stack. Sadly, I'm just going to have to kind of get my forces set up as they were before and just launch one more uh, gung-ho attack uh, on uh, on that point. It's just not going to be as effective, sadly. So we just do that. There's nothing else I can really do. I can't really just attack with those guys on that stack because uh, I don't have the option of a mobile attack, which would be nice because it's a rain turn. And also that stack is just not powerful enough to really go mano a mano and uh, not suffer any real damage, because I mean this deck is still, I believe, very formidable, right? We've got 7, yeah, 14, uh, 15, 17. Uh, this deck is 17, but this deck is just a 10, yeah. So, I mean, that'd be just, what, 27 against 17? I wouldn't even have 2 to 1 odds. So, um, I could get some artillery support, but it wouldn't be, eh, I could get up to 10 more, but even then I'd be just getting 2 to 1 odds, and it just wouldn't be, um, advantageous enough. So I think what instead is I'm going to try to just save that and I mean I could get two to one attack. Uh, I mean sometimes you gotta get risky and bold but it's it's just really not worth it I don't think here. Um, I do desperately want to kind of have them lose. If they just lose even one more step of strength he won't be able to do a no retreat which would be big. Um, and there's only one marker that's left. Not very much. Yeah, it's just the activate any and the 237. Yeah, so that's uh, that's kind of um, kind of cruddy. I don't think I'll be able to do anything. I've kind of put myself in a weird stalemate position here uh, towards the end of the game just because of the way the, the it's developed. So I'm not going to make that attack. I probably should, but a uh, two to one assault is like not very good, and my ER ratings wouldn't be very good, and uh, just it wouldn't be totally worth it. I'd rather just wait. Unfortunately, that means I'm going to get even worse ratings, though, if I use the 21st tanks attack. Ah, just lose, getting that retreat result was not very good. Anyway, we'll just we'll live with that. And that means the last guy, of course, to go is 3rd uh, Motorized for the Germans. And if we go back and look at our uh, map here, let's take a look again what we have going on. So yeah, we got just one. He was able to get that one in there, so annoying. So two, four, five. So now it's just six defense, though. So if we take our little calculations over to the side here, 
Oh, if I just would have gotten that one shit draw, it would have been possible I could have gotten them to retreat and gotten these points because may, this may be the game. That might have been the game right there, right? Okay, so we'll just see. Unless I get a defender eliminated result, which would be pretty crazy. Okay, this actually isn't a 12. It's actually an 8 because I forgot that artillery unit is in that stack and it's 4 points. So we're going to have to... Can I make that up anyway? That guy can fire, but he can't get over there. It's not... Well, could he? What do we got here? Two, four, six. Could I get this guy over there? Maybe. I think I could. Let's take a look. Because you have to go one, two, and three, four. Yeah, he can make it. So he'll go over there. That's actually great. So that's actually eight, but this becomes twelve. Okay. So what does it give me? That gives me 20, 38 to 6. And uh, this guy will get fired, even though this is the last action there. All right, so we're going to do that. We'll turn that over. All right, this is 38 to 6. Um, he can't do any combat reaction or any of the things. He can do no retreat, of course. That's the one really awful thing he can still do. And um, so we got, what, 6, 12, 8, oh, yeah, 6, 12. No. 30, 36. So I have 5, 6. So I still got 6 to 1 odds. That's good. This might actually be, it's still possible. And if we calculate um, our things, of course he has air and I have air, so we're going to bring both our air in. I'm sort of jumbling around the order of battle here, but or the operations, but it all kind of evens out. So we're going to do the, uh... oh wait, he also gets a chance for artillery. I totally forgot about that. He's going to use, uh, first we'll start with the air, and then we'll do artillery. So the Germans have a 5 and a 4 plane coming in. Um, they are going to use a 2 points on a roll for a plane. And we'll try for that 5 there. So uh, because it's rain, there's a plus 3, so I get a minus 1, and then a, or a plus 1, and then a plus 3 on one of these rolls. So we'll do the plus 1 one first. It's a six, nope, don't get it. And then, nope, I don't get the other airplane. Uh, they have no points to really use on their planes, so they can just roll air straight out and need ones. They don't get it, so all of our airplanes with pretty difficult in storms get your airplanes to go. Um, but now they're gonna try to fire their artillery, and they have that four units. They're gonna flip that over. He's gonna spend his uh, HQ point now this time. So it's a five. So he has to roll basically uh, a seven or higher. And he can't, and actually he can't roll a, a ten. So. Well, he didn't get it all. He did roll an eight. So he doesn't get his full uh, ability there. And that was what, a four? So it's just two more. So that becomes what, eight? Uh, it still sucks though. Do I have any artillery? I don't think so. I think I snuck over the other one and it still wasn't fired. Yeah. Yeah, so it's... Yeah, that's what. Uh, nah, that dropped it to four to one. That kind of sucks. All right, well, that, that's pretty much going to, I think, guarantee that we can't get a defender eliminated result. So let's add up our uh, modifiers here. Once again, there's not an engineering unit over here. Did I, didn't I ask that last time? And I was pretty sure I didn't find one. Yeah, I didn't find one. So he's going to get um, basically plus three because he's going to get a village, no retreat, and um, strong point. Uh, I do get minus one for combined arms bonus. Oh wait, not against strong points though. Um, so I get plus three. He, I will be using, uh, what do I have that's like a good unit? Not that good. Yeah, we'll put that guy up. The six will attack. And he has one non-disrupted five, right? So I get minus one ER. And we don't do combat coordination because we're all the same units and uh, it's an assault tag, it's not mobile. So that actually gives us a plus two to the roll. So four to one, assault, plus two to the roll. Pretty unlikely anything good will happen. I roll a five, so that's a seven on a four to one. That's just not really gonna do it. Seven is an attacker one, defender one, uh, armor attrition. Um, 
you know, that just if that had happened last turn, if I could have actually gotten something a little, or if I would have been able to get that out, that would have been nice, because that guy bites it. Um, that guy gets flipped, but it's just too little too late. Right, because now I can't take that down. Ah, that's sort of disappointing. That is uh, super disappointing, but uh, we'll see. I think that pretty much guarantees that the Germans will not win this scenario, I think. We'll find out just in a second. There's only a couple of tokens left. In fact, the ones that come up next are the 237, which we won't even bother with because they're pretty much done moving things around. And then it also leaves the activate any formation marker. That means, uh, well, will it even matter if I attack? To be honest, I don't think it's going to matter because the only thing I can really do is maneuver these guys here. I could try to go for an attack on this stack and just see if I can knock off some armor steps. But even this guy, I think, has two, doesn't he? No, it's just a one stepper. Yeah, uh, but there's like a full strength armor there, and I think they have an artillery. So I'd have to, I could, if I can inflict a two step loss on that stack, um, that could be worth it. What do they have here? Two, three, four, five, six, seven. It's quite a tall order. The most I could get on this guy, six, ten, fifteen. Yeah, I could get like 19 on him. And that just wouldn't be enough to get uh, the odds I need. Because I really do need like at least 3 to 1. Because on a 2 to 1 assault, um, and plus he's in a town, he gets really good defensive uh, DRMs there. Um, yeah, that's just not possible. It wouldn't be possible for me to do that. So I kind of think that's the end. I don't really want to just do another attack here just for the attack's sake. Um, there's nothing here that's going to get me a VP. This attack won't net me a VP. This one won't get me anything. So I think that's kind of the end. Of the, I think that's the end. That is the very last activation. Um, so yeah, let's go ahead and take a look at where we're at on VPs. So we can see that the Germans accrued uh, 18 just through holding, um, well, I guess we're going to finish this turn, right? So that turn ends, they get three more. So they get one, two, three. So they have 21 BPs. And now we'll take a look at what they get for holding um, cities. Remember, they need 28 or more to win. So let's take a look. Do they have Medved? Uh, Medved. Uh, 1,008, I do not think they do. Nope, because that's right there. Did not get there. They didn't get to Utregorsh. That's it. Did they? 1116. Maybe they did. Oh, they did get to Utrigorsh. It's right there. No, that's Bolshoi Utrigorsh. Oh. What is Utrigorsh? It says it's a 1116. That is. Oh, yeah. It's this. I said we were going for Gordishie, and I was totally lying. It's for Utrigorsh. Gordishie is back there. I don't know why I kept calling it the Battle of Gordishie. That's terrible. Uh, no, we did get Utrigorsh. Uh, Shimsk. Uh, do we have Shimsk? It's a 1401. No, we did not get Shimsk. We did get Gordishie. We do have that. We held that. It is worth five victory points. So we're close. Um, oh, that actually might mean we have this victory. I don't know. Uh, Mishaga. That's at 1504. No, we did not get that. Uh, Soltsy. We do hold Soltsy. Uh, that, I think, will guarantee us the win. There we go. Uh, we do not have Sydney and we do not have Volot. Let's see. Let me make sure I didn't lose any other points. East German unit eliminated while completely surrounded by combat. So we combat units. That did not happen ever. I should have thought about that. That would have been nice. Um, so we get like reinforcements. And that's all for that. So yeah, Germans barely eke out a win, uh, just barely. Um, well, I guess they got one point over, two points over, right? 28 would have been a win. And uh, so let's see, for 29 points, we received a marginal victory. So not the best, but the Germans actually did hold out and the salty strategy uh, did pay off for them. Um, even though the Soviets had really good efforts of blocking the road down here. 
uh, I, did, I, did, I mean, I think I made some really critical mistakes. I'll look back at uh, some of the videos maybe earlier and, and try to reflect more, but I know there were some critical mistakes I made here, uh, extending some units, I think, of the 202, uh, and, um, and just uh, sort of getting them wasted right away by some clever panzer moves. I wasn't really uh, on the ball there. Some of the things I didn't really do, I didn't really take advantage of... Um, the combined formations very much. I probably should have devised a much better attack here. It took me a while to sort of get focused on the airfield and think that really hurt me um, because they did leave quite a few forces here and I just wasn't really able to get a lot of things there. I did turn down uh, an ability to get reinforcements that would have cost me three VPs, but I could have gotten eight steps back uh, of units that died and that actually probably would have been really helpful um, I didn't take it I could have gotten some of those back um, and that actually could have tilted the battle here it definitely would have made that less stressful because I could have sent more guys up there but it probably might have even tipped over here and kept me from uh, and maybe pushed them in a salt sea the truth is they just didn't get um, by losing the rain and whatnot, I mean, by not ever losing supply, it was just very difficult to ever get anything done with them. And, and I was worried until I was knocking them down, they could counterattack me. And they did counterattack for a while, right? So difficult, difficult um, to dislodge them there. Uh, I probably, I don't know, just have to think more about what I'm doing here. That was, but that was an interesting game. So that was interesting, uh, fun, very close, almost a... Uh, Almost a Soviet victory. In fact, last turn the Soviets did win when I played this. Sorry, I'm getting all that in there. Uh, so this was a very interesting time to see the Germans win and, and to actually hold Salty. I think because I was so aggressive and moving up here very quickly that I was able to take it. I still couldn't do what the designer notes said and like zoom up here and grab these. I just think that's that seems very difficult. But you know, maybe with repeated play, I would get better at understanding how to to quickly move my forces. I feel like I got too stagnant at the end as well. I uh, really just didn't take it full advantage of my mobility because I never even was able to come down here. Sorry, again, it's dark here, but I wasn't able to get to Volot and take that point. So, yeah, there we go. Full 10 turns, road, uh, Battle for Solzy, Roads to Leningrad. Really fun, had a great time with this game. Um, yeah, highly recommend it. It's a lot of fun. And, and when you play it, it goes a lot faster. I took a lot of time, and obviously I kept forgetting things. Uh, so, you know, if you play with yourself, it, it can go a lot faster. If you play with another, it's even more fun. I could see this being a real fun face-to-face -face game. Obviously, all war games are, you know, supposed to be face-to-face, -face, but not all of us get a chance to do that. But you could see this being a very fun one, and there would be a lot of elements of bluffing, uh, especially with the, the activation markers. You would not know who they what they drew, and they could do combined formation. So some hidden information there that would actually be pretty, uh, pretty fun, pretty fun element of strategy there. Okay, so that was the entire scenario. That was a lot of fun. Uh, I guess I'm going to say fun a lot. So fun, 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 fun. And I'll leave you guys with that. So thanks a lot for watching all these videos.